Hi everybody, Rob Keys here doing a quick review of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. This is super late and I actually saw it uh, the Thursday before it opened and I saw it again 12 hours later with a different group of friends. And uh, I think despite the negativity, now we'll address that in a second, it is a movie I had to see twice because there's just so much in it. There's, there's There are so many plot lines to the film's detriment that the little bits that help make those plot lines make a little more sense they kind of went over my head. There are so many little details in the dialogue and connecting the different threads together uh, that I I just didn't catch it all. I didn't remember it all because so much is happening on screen that I, I needed to see the second time. And I'm not saying everyone should go pay to see this twice because, you know, the movie is not great. But it's also not bad either. And a lot of people are saying it's the worst thing ever. And I, I feel like at least some of those reviews, the ones I've been seeing and, and listening to people online and interacting with them on, on our site, Screen Rant, People, some people anyway, are ignoring the good parts about this. And I think uh, <laughs> and some people are calling for director Zack Snyder's head and um, oh, where my, where's my dog going? And, and they want him like fired off of Justice League, which starts shooting in a matter of days. And that's a little insane because it's not – Zack Snyder obviously as a storyteller is partly at fault, but it's not entirely his script. It's, it's, it's Chris Terrio's and I think David Goyer's script. And I think that's the problem. And I don't know if, if it's them or Snyder or Warner Brothers forcing too many things in because the fact that it's called Dawn of Justice is a big part of the problem because there's so much in this film that doesn't belong. And I, it, it becomes unfocused in a way that I don't know what the story is about. I don't know if it's if it's a follow-up to Man of Steel. Is it the introduction of Batman setting up this conflict where like the government and the people and Batman are trying to hold you know, Superman accountable, but for what? Being the only guy who could stop Zod from destroying the whole Earth? Like, it's, that part doesn't quite make sense. Or is it a strictly set up to Justice League where we have Wonder Woman thrown in here, um, who is one of the best parts of the film, but really has no plot line. Like, literally, her story is she's trying to get back a digital photo. How, how do you get back a digital photo? <laughs> like, Bruce Wayne emails her, spoiler, the photo... And says, oh, it's you in this photo. And I, does Wonder Woman see that and be like, oh, thank God I got my photo back. Does she not realize that digital photos are still on the server, like, everywhere? Stupid. So, like, what I was saying earlier, the parts I think that deserve praise are the elements. Because Zack Snyder, you know, the and his, and his production team, the, the visual and audio design of the elements and, and the presentation of that and how a lot of them are inserted are amazing. Like, Better than most superhero films, maybe better than any superhero film. And by elements, I don't just mean like Batman is cool. I mean like every aspect of Batman is pretty cool. Like the costume, how they do the voice modulator, his vehicles, uh, the, the way they use the bat wing, the way his relationship with Alfred. Alfred himself, played by Jeremy Irons, super freaking cool character, says a few weird lines of dialogue in the film, which don't quite fit, but super cool character. The bat cave. Awesome. How he gets in the Batcave, very cool. Seeing the old Wayne Manor, like, just crushed. You know, like, in, in his 20 years of being Batman, something happened. Maybe a villain attacked and just ruined or burned down his mansion. So now he's living in this, like, modern uh, lakeside house. Like, all those parts are super cool. And seeing Batman be a detective, awesome. Um, and the elements extend beyond Batman, of course. I actually really like Henry Cavill's Superman again. I like the effects of his, of his powers and how he just lands and hovers and... The, his eyes get super evil looking when he's going to fire lasers because it is an evil act. And I like Wonder Woman, the costume, the weapons, her fighting style, uh, her little intro music, which <laughs> became a bit of a parody of itself. But it's cool to see each character has their own sort of theme song, and they've already established that. So you know when these characters come back further down the line in the, in the DCU, um, they're all going to be recognizable in their own way. They're presented differently, and that's cool. Like, those elements are cool, but the details and the story and how they intertwine or, or fail to intertwine – is where the problem lies. Again, going back to Wonder Woman, she's in this film looking for a digital digital photo. It's dumb. She, when she joins the, comes back to Metropolis or Gotham for the final battle, she gets off an airplane with her luggage. Where is her sword and costume? I know she's not carrying that in her in her carry-ons on Turkish Airlines. Turkish Airlines, by the way, <laughs> for a film that's not set in our world or a version of our world where there are things like Metropolis and and Gotham, it was weird seeing. So many real-life elements thrown in there, like Turkish Airlines, who's a big sponsor of this film. They sponsor the stupid Super Bowl commercials for this movie. And then there's like Anderson Cooper from CNN shows up. Nancy Grace shows up from, I guess, Court TV. I don't know. And then even uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson shows up to talk about the science of, of Superman and aliens. And those were kind of neat at first. And I thought, well, you're going so far out of your way to make this not set in our world. It was weird to have those elements in there. Um 
and they really tried to force that on on the on like the, the viewers as if like this is a real world don't you feel how grounded this is and i'm like no i don't because batman's trying to kill superman that's not grounded and he's trying to kill superman because superman who has done literally nothing but save people and literally save the world he wants to kill him because you know he might be bad like that what do you kill all the other villains because they might be bad because like why is Joker alive then? How are we going to see Joker in Suicide Squad if that's your mentality? It doesn't it doesn't work. And again, like Batman, so many elements, amazing. And everyone wants to see Ben Affleck play Batman again in his own solo movie. I want to see him write and direct it. Apparently, he's already written a script and everyone's saying it's great. We'll see. Um, I hope so because he deserves it. But again, like for an awesome detective Batman, he sure can't figure out shit when it comes to Lex Luthor. He had no idea what he was doing. And even when, for as a detective, he's trying to gather intel and information. And when he meets and wants to fight Superman, the first thing Superman does is say, look, Bruce, Lex is trying to end of a conversation. They start fighting. And it's like, he probably has some important info. Why don't you listen? Um, so that just felt so crammed. And, and you combine that with the other story elements I kind of lost you know were lost in the shuffle of everything and it's just kind of a waste it's just it's messy and jumbled and you combine that with like trying to make this very serious and, and I'll just spoil it like the Superman dies at the end of this again of all the stories they fit in they also somehow fit in the doomsday and death of Superman storyline on top of everything else uh just making it a mess so it's like it's not I can't feel the weight of that even though like Zack Snyder's visual style and the music made me tear up a little bit during like the dual funeral scene um, and seeing Supes die and people react to that and, and it's having such great talent um, playing, you know, the supporting cast of like Lois and, and Martha, Martha's, both Mar Martha's. Uh, that's kind of wasted because I, I can't take parts of it seriously when you're doing these other things and throwing them away or rushing bits. Like the Batman v Superman fight comes to the end of the film and like it's not earned and then the way it ends, it moves into another thing, which is a giant CGI fight against a CGI monster. And it's just kind of like, ugh, I don't care. Like, no one no one cares for mindless CGI grunts being pounded on by superpower people. That's not interesting. That's not exciting. And the fact that that superpowered mindless CGI cave troll from Lord of the Rings came from Lex having a bath with a dummy of Michael Shannon and then cutting his hand and dropping blood in the water. No. Um... But that's not to say you shouldn't see this film because, it, again, the elements are so strong. Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, and, like, the little teases of, of like, Flash. Uh, and there are some weird sequences which don't make any sense, uh, but will later on. So I, I like it. At least they're trying to take a different approach in that each movie teases something. It doesn't quite make sense yet, but when you watch the next movie, it will. So I feel like every movie that comes out will make the previous movie that much better. In a similar way that Iron Man 2, when that came out, I really didn't like a lot of it, and I especially didn't like Black Widow, but when I saw the Avengers and went back to it, I was like, okay, that Black Widow intro was pretty awesome. Um, I kind of get it now. Uh, and I, I, you know, we can only hope uh, for a film that has such bad reviews like Batman v Superman that the next film, which is Justice League Part 1 and, and Wonder Woman, both coming out next year, that they will make all the those bits, those related bits, that much more better uh, since Batman v Superman is supposed to be a launching pad. Not a good start. Too much. They should have simplified it more. Uh, you have Batman and Superman. Make that cool. Make that fun. Make that awesome. And then build off of that instead of just throwing everything in there, not having it make sense, and like just thinking it's going to be the best thing ever because it's, it's not. Uh, somehow this has worst reviews and is even more divisive than Man of Steel. So that's the ultimate fail. And the box office numbers for the second weekend came in and you know, it had a big drop off. I, it's possible this film does not make a billion dollars, which is, you know, uh, that's a fail. If it is this movie, this big, this budget, the, the production timeline of this thing, the cast, the amount of DC's three biggest heroes together for the first time. And it can't make, if it can't make a billion dollars, then, um, changes need to be made. And, uh, I guess we'll just see. But if you saw the movie, I'm sure you have. If you're watching, share your thoughts in, uh, in the comments. And let me know what I'm more excited about is talking about what's next. Do you think there'll be changes? And, and what do you want to see from the future movies? Some news yesterday came out saying that the Flash movie will feature Cyborg. Like it'll be the two of them before Cyborg gets his own movie. And uh, we heard some rumors about Justice League Part 1, which, again, starts shooting in a few days. It's not going to focus on Darkseid, who was teased in Batman v Superman just yet. It's going to focus on the conflict of, of Aquaman and Atlantis. Is not too happy with the surface people. And so they may be dealing with that conflict who, because, um, how, how do I say that the Atlanteans might be at a war or have a long standing rivalry with the Amazons, uh, Wonder Woman's people. 
So that may be the conflict of the first movie and then getting them all together for part two, which presumably would see Darkseid come and maybe they'll tease like um, the Green Lantern Corps or something like that. But anyways, I won't drag on too much. Again, uh, like and subscribe for more videos. I have a few more reviews on some video games I'm going to record. Uh, but I want to know your thoughts on this film and what you want to see next. So um, cheers and I'll see you next time.